Death does not discriminate due to age. Doesn't discriminate. When your time is up, your time is up. And then you will just live with regret. In your grave, regretting, I wish I'd done more. And then you're brought on Yom Al Qiyamah, Hatta Ida Jaa Ahadahum Al Mout. Kala, Rabbi Rjiun. Oh Allah, take me back. La'alli a'malu saliha. So that I can do some more righteous acts. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend to settle the scores once and for all between people and judge between them. And during that time, every nation will be on its knees. And then the very first people who will be called to stand in the court of Allah, the very first to experience the reckoning from the billions, Hafiz of Quran. The second, a person who was killed in the path of Allah, Shaheed, Jihad. A third, a person who had a lot of money. All of the nations are watching. This is how it begins. Before the kuffar and the munafiqun, it begins with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the one who had memorized the Quran and he will say to him, did I not give you knowledge of what I had sent to my messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The man will say, yes, O oh my Lord. Allah will say to him, so what did you do with that knowledge? The man will say, I recited Quran night and day. Allahu Akbar. Then Allah will say, Kadab, no, you speak a lie. And the angels will say, Kadab, you speak a lie. He only did that so that people say what a good reciter he is. And that is exactly what people said. You wanted dunya? You wanted praise? I gave you what you wanted. Today and the hereafter, you have nothing with Allah. Then Allah will summon the second. Allah will say to him, what did you do with your life? The man will say, I was instructed to carry out jihad when I was alive. And so I did it and I fought and I died in your path, O oh Allah. Allah will say, you're a liar. And the angels will say, you're a liar. You did that so that people say, you're a brave man. And that was said. Then the third one will be brought. Who was he? The one whom Allah had given a lot of money. Allah will say to him, did I not give you so much money such that you never needed a favor from anyone? And the man will say, yes, oh my Lord, you did. Allah will say, what did you do with that money? He will say, I used to spend on my family and I used to give in charity. Allahu Akbar. Allah will say, Kadab, you are a liar. And the angels will say, Kadab, you are a liar. But you only gave that money so that people say, such and such is a generous man. And that is exactly what people said about you. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Abu Huraira said, then the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam put his hand on my knee. And he said, Ya Abu Huraira, those three people, O Abu Huraira, will be the very first three who will be cast into hell on the day of judgment. What was their downfall, brothers and sisters? What was their downfall? Intention. There was no lack of action, don't get me wrong. Some of them spending the night in Salat, Quran. Others spending his money, we love money. The third died, he gave the most precious gift to his Lord. None of it was worth anything to Allah because the intention was missing. La ilaha illallah. How do you stay safe? How do you stay saved? How do you protect yourself? We see a lot of things that we're hearing about. We don't know what to believe and what to not believe. What do I do? Like, how do I protect myself? Give me some fundamentals here. And this is where the Prophet ﷺ said three things. And listen very carefully. قَالَ أَمْسِكْ عَلَيْكَ لِسَانِكَ Hold your tongue. Learn to hold your tongue. Like, grab it and hold it. Not in the physical sense, but restrain this tongue of yours. Hold yourself. Because it could be one word you say, one thing that you utter, that totally ruins the life of someone else and ruins your own afterlife. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالْيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُكْ You know, this literally means let your home encompass you, let your home suffice you. Like don't, everyone wants to get out all the time. Actually, وَالْيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُكْ Like learn to stay home a bit, learn to be by yourself, learn to enjoy seclusion, learn to be introspective and reflective and in a state of contemplation, in a state of remembrance. Because if you're talking about everybody else and you're busying yourself with everybody else's stuff, that is disaster waiting to happen. The last one the Prophet said, وَبْكِ عَلَىٰ خَطِيئَتِكَ And cry over your sins. 
What this means is that many people focus on either the future uncertainty of the world or the current gossip about other people's flaws and you have plenty of current and past baggage that you need to cry about and you need to un get out of yourself. I've got things that I don't want to meet Allah with. I don't know when I'm going to meet Him, but I know I will meet Him. Let me work on those things and do that dirty laundry rather than trying to indulge in the dirty laundry of everybody else. There was a very beautiful conversation that reminds me of this verse, and I'll be brief. That took place between Adam alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ibn Kathir records this in his tafsir of these verses. He says that when Adam was being taken away from this garden, he asked Allah a few questions. Number one, he said, My Lord, did you not create me with your own two hands? And Allah said, yes. He said, did you not breathe into me the breath of life and cause me to live? And Allah says, yes. Did you not when I sneeze say, Allah, did, did, may Allah have mercy on you? Yes, I did say that. Then, ask, then Adam asked a very wise question to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that explains us. He said, when you created me and you placed me in that garden and you told me not to eat from that tree, didn't you already know I was going to eat from it? And see the wisdom of Adam and he said, didn't you know I was going to eat from that tree? You see, Adam understood that Allah knew before creating anything that he was going to create Adam, he was going to put him in the garden and him and his wife and they were going to eat from that tree even though they were told not to do so. Allah knew. So Allah said, yes, I knew you were going to do it. So Adam السلام, said, then can you not forgive me for that and put me back in that garden one day? And Allah said, yes. And he taught them the very famous words, My Lord, I have wronged my own soul. And if you do not forgive me and have mercy on me, surely I will be one of the losers. So you see, life is not about whether you will sin or not. Because you're going to sin. If you keep living, you're probably going to keep sinning at some point in your life. It's not about whether you will sin or not. Kulli bani Adam khata. Every son of Adam sins. What is important is what do you do about the sin? He said, but the best of those who sin are those who repent. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He told the angels, I know something you don't know. I'm proving a point here. That yes, I'm going to create this khalifa. Yes, his progeny, many of them are going to turn away from me. Yes, they're all going to commit sin. They're all going to do wrong. But there will be some of them who will turn back to me and ask me to forgive them. And I will forgive them. You see, true power, this is why understanding the attributes of Allah is, is difficult for the human mind. Because true power is not punishing when you have the capability to do so. True power is when you have the right to punish. Allah has the right to punish all of us for our sins. Allah is capable of punishing us. Yet He chooses to forgive those who seek His forgiveness. That's true power. When you have all the capabilities, all of the power to punish, and yet you lean towards forgiveness, and you're lenient and merciful. This is the Rabb that we serve. This is the Rabb that the Muslims worship. Is a Rabb who is forgiving, who is merciful, that knows that I'm going to sin. That knew that I was going to sin before He created me. So therefore, when I do so, I am going to turn to Him, and beg Him to forgive me. And you will find Him to be most merciful. This is a beauty, beautiful part of Islam that I get from these verses. And Allah knows best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to be passive. He wants you to be active. He wants you to create something. He wants you to do something. He doesn't want you to be that kind of Muslim that looks at the news 24, 20, 24 on 24 and speaks about the world but doesn't change his own world. People keep on speaking about the world all the time. Change your world. Change the way you behave, the way you think. Build your life. Change the lives of people. Prophet ﷺ said, your fasting and your Qur'an, they show up on the Day of Judgment. And your fasting as a person says, Ya Rabb, my Lord, I prevented him from his food and his desires during the day. فَشَفِعْنِي فِيهِ So let me intercede for him. And then the Qur'an shows up and says, my Lord, I prevented him from sleeping at night. فيه, so let me intercede for him. So Allah lets both the Quran and fasting intercede on your behalf.
Now, all of these forms of intercession, whether they're from the prophets, the angels, or the righteous, are in fact part of the mercy of Allah, right? Because no one could intercede without his permission in the first place. But remember that Allah will not be outdone by anyone else in mercy and grace. So after all the intercessors, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will say, بَقِيَتْ شَفَاعَتِي There now remains my intercession. And Allah will take a handful from the fire and bring forth these people whose bodies have been burnt and cast them into a river at the entrance of Jannah that is called Ma'ul Haya, the water of life. So Allah's intercession is for the largest group of people on that day. Now here's the thing, why wait to hope to be amongst that group of people who get cast into the water of life? Instead, استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم Respond to Allah and His Messenger when they call you to that which gives you life, and that is the Qur'an. And seek a position of not just being interceded for, but being in such a position with Allah that you get to intercede for others on the Day of Judgment.